Welcome, Imaginators. Sit back, buckle in, and ignite your imagination. This is the Imaginate series, season one, The Man with the Red Umbrella. I'm Joey Massio, the author and creator of Imaginate. This episode is unofficially brought to you by Kids Listen. They're a grassroots organization of advocates for high-quality audio content for children, made up of people who create and produce kids' podcasts. And this week, they've welcomed Imaginate as part of the team. We are delighted to be on board. I've been talking with some of the other creators, and they all seem like stand-up guys and gals. So head on over to kidslisten.org or download their app on iTunes, where you can listen to the shows directly, including Imaginate. Here's a recap of the last episode of our show. Nate is at his school's career fair. At the Primo Robotics booth, they challenge the students to design a robot. Nate drew one up in his notebook and called it the Robo Robber. When the Primo Robotics banner fell behind the booth, Nate volunteered to go back and get it. But when he got there, he stood face to face with the Robo Robber, the robot he had just designed. And now imaginate the man with the red umbrella, episode six, the Robo Robber. The Robo Robber rocked back and forth as it balanced on a miniature monster truck wheel. It had a round torso and two extending arms with claw like hands that were currently pulling on a power cord that belonged to a nearby booth. This was his machine. There was no mistaking it this time. He designed it. Everything from the row of square lights for teeth to the color of the metal it was made out of. This time, he wasn't going to let anyone else take credit. Nate took a few steps closer. The robo-robber yanked the extension cord out of the wall. The lights on the booth went out. Nate heard the workers on the other side. Uh, what happened? Frank, go check the plug! Nate gasped. Uh, Oh no. The robo-robber's glance shot up at Nate, and he froze. The little camera lens eyes focused in on him. Nate spoke in the sweetest voice he could muster. Hey, little guy. The robo-robber blinked its lenses. I'm not going to hurt you. Nate slowly stepped forward. I just don't want anyone to see you, so... The robot quickly rolled up the extension cord, put it into its cargo hold, and took off behind the booths. Nate followed after him. But there was only about two feet between the booths and the gym wall, not nearly wide enough for a humanoid to go running through. He watched his creation disappear into the depths of the dark alleyway. Seconds later, Nate popped out behind the Primo Robotics booth. Where's the sign, cadet? Stryker called out. Nate ignored him and went straight for Alex and Thomas. He grabbed them both by the shirts and pulled them to an empty spot on the gym floor with no one around. Guys, you need to listen to me and believe every word I say. Sure! Thomas shrugged. Good. Nate took a deep breath, and then he let it all out. (sighs) I created a small robot with my mind, and it's called a robo-robber, and it's currently rolling around behind booths stealing things, and we have to catch it before anyone sees it so I can prove to you that I really made it. Thomas raised an eyebrow. Alex stared blankly. Nate looked into the eyes of his two best friends. Are you going to help me? Of course. This career day was getting b b boring anyway. What is this rotor rooter? Robo robber. Yeah, robo rober. What does it look like? Nate opened his notebook and showed them his drawing. Like this. Alex and Thomas looked at the picture for a second. Let's spread out. Nate scanned the career fair. Look for anything out of the ordinary. 
the three scattered to different parts of the gym. Alex ran over to a booth set up by King Chef, a company that specialized in food preparation. He looked at the display table, mixing bowls, measuring cups, various pots and pans, and other kitchen utensils were on display. Would you like a brochure? said a plump little lady in a chef's hat. Uh, No, thank you. I'm looking for something out of the ordinary. The chef lady smiled. Becoming a chef is very out of the ordinary. How many chefs do you know? Uh, Does my mom count? Over at the Meditech booth, Thomas searched behind the model skeletons, TV displays, and 3D computers. For a moment, he thought he saw the robo-robber. But it was a futuristic-looking trash can. Even the garbage was high-tech in the medical field. Nate ran oh, from booth to booth, no way to searching for his creation. Somewhere yeah. between the Waste Management Company and Main Street Bank, Inc., Nate bumped into Claire, who dropped her notebook. Sorry, Claire. Nate picked up the notebook for her. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. What are you... Can't stay. Bye. Nate ran off. Claire watched Nate. He peeked under the tablecloth at the next booth. Across the gym, she noticed Alex and Thomas were also searching around. The three boys were looking for something. But what? Claire curiously kept her eyes on them. It was Alex that found the robo-robber. Alex was munching on some spinach dip samples and talking with the plump chef lady about the difference between basting and marinating when he noticed the tablecloth rustle behind her. Something was trying to poke through. Under the tablecloth, Alex saw the bottom half of a mini monster truck wheel. A small metallic arm reached through an opening of the tablecloth and clamped onto a bright red spatula on the table and quickly pulled it under. Alex choked on a spinach dip. He forced a hard swallow so he could breathe again, turned, and waved his arms like crazy in Nate's direction. Nate, you gotta get over here! The plump chef lady grinned. Good spinach dip, eh? I'll get some more you can share with your friends. She waddled off. Nate and Thomas ran over. It's under the table. The three of them knelt down and lifted up the green tablecloth. There, rummaging through a storage box under the table, was the robo-robber in all its glory. Alex and Thomas stared in amazement. Thomas finally blinked. I thought we were playing a game. Alex wiped the drool off his face. Me too. No game. Nate smiled. This is real. The robo-robber turned toward the three boys. They jumped. Don't move. The robo-robber stared at them. Grab it on three. Whatever you do, don't let go. I'm ready. I'm scared. One, two... Three! The robo-robber was off before any of the boys moved. It grabbed the tablecloth as it left, pulling down all of the kitchen utensils that were on top of it. The robo-robber, covered in the green tablecloth like a ghost, zoomed out of sight, leaving Nate, Alex, and Thomas standing there between the mess of kitchen tools with everyone looking at them, including the plump chef lady who just got back. Boys! The lady said, holding a dish. Now this is no way to act if you want more spinach dip. Nate grabbed his friend's arms. We don't. We're full. Thanks. And the three boys ran off. They saw glimpses of the green tablecloth between booths whizzing around the gym. As the tablecloth dragged behind, it caught the edges of boxes and corners of tables. A series of behind-the-scenes crashes created chaos as the robo-robber circled the gym. Students and adults began to take notice. They especially noticed when the corner pole of the Turbo Garden booth was yanked up, sending the display into the Meditech booth next to it. Almost there, said Thomas, as he and Nate closed in on their green ghost. 
Alex huffed and puffed behind them, trying to catch up. Nate turned to Alex. Come on, hurry up! The robo-robber took off at top speed. Nate and Thomas stopped and watched as the whole gym was sent into commotion as the robo-robber zipped under, behind, and through booths. Alex finally caught up. Whoa! He's fast! Like, really fast! Nate's world slowed down as his mind sped up. Fast. Really fast. That's how I designed them. But there was another key design feature that came to Nate's mind. Nate thought back to what he said when he first saw the robo-robber. I just don't want anyone to see you. And it's staying hidden. Then he remembered what he said a few moments ago. Grab it on three. Whatever you do, don't let go. The robo-robber grabbed the tablecloth and took off when Nate counted to three. It hasn't let go of the tablecloth since. Then, just now, what he said to Alex. Come on, hurry up. The robo-robber took off like a rocket. Voice activation. I need a microphone. Nate ran off. Thomas and Alex looked at each other, shrugged, then followed. Nate ran through the mess of the gym. Some students were running around trying to fix things. Others were making things worse. There weren't enough teachers to keep everything in control. Principal Harvey was trying to set up the giant career day sign that had fallen over when Nate ran up to the microphone. Without thinking, Nate grabbed the microphone stand, leaned it over, and spoke loudly. A hush fell over the gym. All commotion came to an end. Everyone looked around to see why, but since there was no direct evidence, everyone just looked at Nate. Nate suddenly became very aware that he held center stage. Luckily, he was able to stammer out more. He chose his words carefully. I suggest you go to your class and... Power down. My class is room 115, so go to your class and power down. Everyone in the gym just looked confused. Principal Harvey stepped up and gently took the microphone from Nate. Yes, Nate's right. All students should report back to class and cool down. It's obvious there were some problems with the setup of the booths, and we'll get this all cleaned up. We apologize for the inconvenience to our gracious career guests. Let's give them a round of applause. As the crowd gradually and confusingly clapped, Nate, Alex, and Thomas headed off to room 115. Claire followed. The three arrived at their classroom door and opened it. In the front of the classroom, looking more like a futuristic trash can than ever, was the powered-down robo-robber. In off mode, his mini monster truck wheel retracted into the torso, and the camera lens eyes sunk into its head. Nate, Alex, and Thomas worked quickly to empty out Nate's backpack and get the robo-robber inside. Just as they were zipping it up, Claire came in. Hey, guys. She noticed Nate's school stuff spread all over his desk. What are you up to? The three boys were speechless for a moment. Then, Alex cleared his throat. Um, we're just eager to learn. <laughs> Even Nate knew that was a terrible lie. If Claire was suspicious, she didn't have time to question them because the rest of the class came pouring in. The three boys had to switch off carrying Nate's backpack home. The robo-robber was heavier than all their school books combined. To be honest, Thomas carried it most of the way home because Alex complained of a bad back. When they got to Nate's room, they closed the door, pulled the curtains shut, and opened Nate's backpack. They set the robo-robber in the middle of the room. Nate finally spoke. I'm going to turn it on. Whoa! I don't think that's a good idea. It's okay. 
I know how to control it now. Thomas grabbed the backpack. I'm ready to c c c catch it, just in case. Nate took a deep breath. Robo robber on. The robot popped to life. The wheel shot out of the bottom, the arms expanded from the sides, and the camera lens eyes zoomed out of its head. It happened so fast it made all three of them jump. The robo robber's head spun around, surveying the room. This thing is so cool. What can it do? I designed it to steal things from my enemies. That's why it has expandable arms and a storage compartment in its body. Nate, you didn't really make this with your mind. That's impossible. Yeah, it's probably a prop from that primal robotics booth. Guys, seriously, I really did. Nate grabbed his notebook and handed it to Alex. Look, here are the blueprints I drew. So you drew a picture of it. That doesn't mean you created it. Then why does it only respond to my voice? Nate turned to the robo-robber. Grab my notebook. The robo-robber's claw-like hands quickly swiped the notebook away from Alex. <laughs> Alex jumped back. The robot deposited the notebook in his storage compartment. Alex fumed. Not cool, robo-robber. Punch Nate in the face. The robot didn't move. See? He only listens to me. Maybe it's a g g glitch or something. No, I created it with my mind. Do you n know how c c c crazy that sounds? I am not crazy. I created the mystery float and I created this robot. With your mind? Yes. Alex chimed in. Then create something right now! This caught Nate a little off guard. You want me to create something right now? Yeah. Fine, I will. Uh, wh what do you want me to make? Alex thought for a second. Make a TV. Y your room is seriously lacking one. <laughs> All right. Ooh, but make it so cookies come out of it, too. Like you press a button and out pops a cookie. Nate looked to Thomas. It's a g g g good idea. All right, then, Robo Robber, hand me my notebook. The storage compartment opened, and the Robo Robber pulled out the notebook and handed it to Nate. Nate got to work. It would be a flat screen TV that is 72 inches wide. It would be a 3D TV with a pair of 3D glasses for each of us. It would have stored in it every kid's movie that was ever made, and, and we could watch them all for free. It would need a cloaking device on it, so whenever my mom came in, it would turn invisible. And of course, it would dispense cookies out of the front whenever we pushed the cookie button. Chocolate chip cookies! Uh, yes, chocolate chip. None of those nut-filled cookies! Those are gross! I got it, Alex. Nate put the finishing touches on his sketch. On the top, he wrote the name of his invention. The CTV. C standing for cookie, of course. Nate sat up and looked around. Thomas and Alex looked around his room, too. What next? I, uh, I don't know. It usually appears by now. Uh-huh. Sure. No, it has. Nate shut his eyes real tight and thought real hard about the CTV. He pictured it in his mind every inch from how the screen would shine to how the cookies would taste. He opened his eyes. Nothing. Nate tossed his notebook across the room, sat on his bed, and plopped his head in his hands. Look, Nate, if you want us to, to believe you, we'll believe you. Nate shook his head. That's not it. Well, well, it is, but it isn't. Well, I just... Alex walked over to the robo-robber. Hey, we have a robot in your room. A real, live, working robot. I don't care where it came from. Why are we not going nuts with it right now? Let's see what this baby can do. <laughs> Nate perked up. You're right. We have the robo-robber. Let's send it on some missions. Alex clapped his hands together. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the three boys went to work, putting together missions that would test the Robo Robber's capabilities. 
they had no idea that across the street, in Mrs. Robinson's big poplar tree, high up in the branches, was the man with the red umbrella. His long, thin body perfectly hidden among the skinny tree branches. His opened umbrella was pointed at Nate's room. Every word the boys spoke echoed out of the open umbrella like a big red speaker. And what should his first mission be? Something easy. We don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. He rested the umbrella on a branch and took out his ripped-off corner of newspaper and a pen. He wrote, He doesn't know how to use his powers. We should take him now. The words disappeared into the paper. The men listened to Nate, Alex, and Thomas talk about whether the robo-robber's first mission should be taking the food dish from Mr. Nelson's angry pit bull next door, or hiding Spencer's prized basketball shoes in the garage. The man with the red umbrella personally thought, combining the two, by putting the shoes in the pit bull's food dish, would be the best mission. But hey, these were just kids. You can't expect them to think of such genius ideas. Words slowly appeared on the paper. Stick to the new plan. The man sighed. He hated waiting. He looked across the street into Nate's window. The robo-robber was rolling in circles at Nate's command. What would I do if I had that little robot? (laughs) Nate slept well that night. With all the excitement at school and the missions they sent the robo-robber on, Nate was exhausted. He dreamt of the many more things he wanted to do with his creation. When he awoke the next morning, he went straight under his bed for the box he stored the robo-robber in. But when he pulled it out, the robot was gone. What? The only things in the box was the Primo Robotics banner, an extension cord, and a bright red spatula. Nate checked under his bed and around his room. He knew he had powered down the robo-robber before he went to bed. He was certain of it. Then he noticed his bedroom door was slightly open. Nate knew what had happened. The boys in the Spelling family have a history of going into each other's room and borrowing things that didn't belong to them. Nate could always tell what brother it was, too. He scanned his room for clues. He spotted it almost immediately. The picture he kept on his desk, the one of him with Alex and Thomas at last year's school carnival, was missing. Nate found the picture in the trash can. Putting the picture of his two best friends in the trash was a pretty sleazy thing to do, and Nate knew exactly the sleazeball brother who would do it. Nate ran downstairs and saw Jack and Hunter sitting at one end of the table, chowing down their morning bowls of cereal. Spencer sat at the other end of the table. Where is it? Nate said, looking straight at Spencer. Where is what, your coolness? Oh, that's been missing for a long time, bro. (laughs) Where's my robe? Nate stopped. He hadn't shown anyone in his family his invention. He went out of his way last night to make sure no one saw it. But not knowing about it wouldn't stop Spencer from taking it. Where's your robe? What kid wears a robe? Nate just got more mad. Where is my new toy? You took it. Why would I want one of your dumb toys? You were in my room this morning. No, I wasn't. You put my picture in the trash. Hey, if you finally realized your friends were trashy and put them where they belong, you can't blame me. (laughs) Nate got hot with anger. He turned around and ran up the stairs. Spencer turned serious. Don't you dare go in my room! He left a full bowl of cereal and chased after him. Nate made it to Spencer's room, shut the door, and locked it. Spencer pounded on the door. Open the door! Open it! Nate searched his brother's room. 
He knew he didn't have long. Soon a parent was going to come intervene or Spencer was going to break down the door. Either way, Nate didn't have time to waste. As Spencer yelled various threats, Nate quickly searched under the bed, in the closet, behind the curtains, and in most of the dirty piles of clothes scattered around the room. Nate was going through the second dresser drawer when the door opened. Luckily for Nate, it was his dad that came through the door, holding the key in one hand and keeping Spencer from pounding Nate to a pulp with the other. Don't touch my stuff, snot face! You touch my stuff first! Mr. Spelling placed himself firmly between the two. Both of you stop talking now! The boys reluctantly obeyed. Mr. Spelling looked at Nate. Why did you come in here? Spencer came in my room this morning and took something of mine. Mr. Spelling turned to Spencer. Is this true? Spencer just stared at Nate like a hungry lion stares at a zebra. Mr. Spelling repeated himself. Is this true? Yes, but it didn't take his stupid toy. I just took his headphones. Mine broke. Mr. Spelling's face was stone. Give them back right now. He took something else, too. No, I didn't. Spencer threw the headphones into Nate's hands. Man, you're such a butt wipe. Spencer, we don't say that. Nate, what else do you think he took? Nate slowly answered. It was a robot. A toy robot, not a real one. Of course it's not a real one, bozo. Spencer. That was all Mr. Spelling needed to say. And Spencer knew that was his final warning. Nate, where did you get it from? Nate didn't want to lie to his dad, but he also didn't want his dad to think he was crazy. He felt lying was the better option. I was borrowing it from Alex. Okay, let's check Hunter and Jack's room and see if it wandered in there. And Nate, no matter what you think Spencer did, locking yourself in his room is not a good reaction. It will just get you in trouble. Along Luckily, with they him. had to leave for school now, soon, so they knew this lecture wouldn't be long. As their father talked, Nate and Spencer exchanged silent stares. Each was letting the other know that this wasn't finished. Not by a long shot. Voices for this episode were provided by the creatively capable Bobby Massio, Michael Rosenbaum, Jessica White, and Dana Sobel. Imaginate theme music by the melodically masterful Jeffrey Larson. If you've been enjoying Imaginate, we'd appreciate it a whole lot if you could leave us a review on iTunes or rate us on whatever platform you're using to listen. Until next time, Imaginators, and remember... Embrace failure. All the best people do it. <laughs>